Hello my dear sewing friends, it's Elisa here with Thoughtful Creativity and today I'm standing in front of you in a white t-shirt with some markings on it and you will see the same corresponding markings on the dress form as well. And it's because today I would love to share with you my method of drafting a simple fitted darted bodice block. And that is a bodice block that will look like this at the end. It features two darts in the front, one waist dart and one bust dart and two darts in the back. One dart will be at the waistline and one dart will be an optional dart in the back armhole that you can then transfer into the shoulder line or the back neckline. So this is a fitted darted bodice block for woven fabrics that you can then use and transform into a variety of different garments for your upper body. So without any further ado, let's jump into the measurements. Here I would like to take a quick second and say big, big thank you to one of the most wonderful people that actually gave me this dress form as a gift. Thank you so much. This person happens to be a subscriber and a very, very lovely person that I had the pleasure to meet in person in real life. So you know who you are. Thank you so very much because this wouldn't be possible without you. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. So today we have Miss Monica over here. She's a little bustier than I am. So today we're going to be working with the dress form. However, I will show you what are the measurements on my t-shirt right over here so you can see them on the body and then on the dress form. Now, while I do have these markings on my t-shirt, you will be taking your measurements with undergarments on. However, you will not be wearing any t-shirts or any sweaters or anything else like that, as that will greatly affect the fit and actually the measurements themselves. So you need to make sure that you're wearing your regular undergarments that you usually wear under your everyday clothes, but you need to make sure that you're not taking these measurements on top of your existing clothes that you're wearing as of this very moment. So the first measurement that you will Need to mark is the bust apex and you see it right over here and then of course you will need to make sure that you mark your waist usually you would do that by taking a cord or a string of yarn or a thread and tying it around your waist or a piece of elastic works really well as well and securing it in a knot so that way you know that it stays right there and you're going to be taking your measurements from this point because a lot of these measurements are going to be from waist up so it's really important that the measurement of your waist stays constant as much as possible. Next, right over here at the base of your neck is going to be your high point shoulder. Now I did mark it with a line, however, if I were you, I would mark it with a tiny little dot. So that way you know when you're measuring it on the front and then you're measuring it on the back, you're not measuring over or under, you're measuring it right to that dot and then from that dot to the back. So that way it's not skewing your actual measurement. Now from this point right over here, the same high point shoulder or the base of the neck, you will be measuring your shoulder seam and that shoulder seam is gonna go all the way to the edge of your shoulder. Now this is the measurement that a lot of people do get a little bit off because it's really hard to determine where is the edge of your actual shoulder. Now the easiest way that I think would be to explain where your shoulder ends is to imagine that this is your shoulder seam right over here and this is your arm. So you want to find this part right over here where your arm bends. So where it actually bends right over here, that's the beginning of your arm and the end of your shoulder. So on my arm right over here, if you put your hand like this and then you just start lifting up your arm, you will feel where that arm lifts up, that little crease. And that's where you want to mark the edge of your shoulder. You will also need the nape, which is right over here. And through this measurement, you're also going to be measuring the measurement of back shoulder width. So this measurement is really important and you can feel this bone right over here. Now this one is not necessary, but I do think that it helps quite a bit. So marking center front and center back does help quite a bit, especially when you're going to be measuring shoulder slopes. So if you cannot do it yourself, as you can see, I did not do my center back because I just couldn't do it for myself, then ask a family friend or somebody else to help you out a little bit with this. It will definitely pay off. Now I will be showing all of these measurements on the dress form as well as soon as we get started with our pattern drafting. But I wanted to say one more time that it goes without saying that you need to measure yourself accurately and precisely because that is the very foundation of a well-fitting bodice block or any other pattern block out there because that ensures that whatever you have drafted actually fits. So take your time, write these measurements down, enlist the help of your friend or family member if needed, and just make sure that you take correct measurements. 
Okay, let's get your pattern paper ready and let's get started. I'm using a marker in my tutorial since that is the best way for you to see it on camera. But for your pattern draft, please use pencil as it creates thinnest line that is not going to skew your measurements. To begin, I'm going to get started on this side, which is also going to be the center back of my pattern. Now, first measurement that we're going to use is back waist length from the nape of the neck all the way to the waist. And you see me draft it in a straight line here. Now for visual reference, it is this measurement that you see on your screen right now. Now, starting at the bottom on the same line, we're going to draft a measurement that is back high point shoulder all the way to the waist. Now it will be a little longer than the first line and you can see this measurement on the dress form right here. So that way it's a little bit easier for you to understand which measurement is which. So now we have two measurements on the same line. First one is nape to waist and the second one is back high point shoulder to waist. For this next measurement, we're going to start right here in the bottom on the same line. We're going to draw a line that is the same as the measurement from the waist all the way to the bust apex. And you can see this measurement right over here and on the dress form, it looks like this. Now on the bottom right over here, we're going to draft a perpendicular line. So the line at the right angle that is going to be equal to one quarter of your full waist circumference plus one eighth of an inch for ease. Now, for those of you who are working with centimeters, please take a look in the info box below and I will leave the measurements in centimeters as well so that way it's a little bit easier for you. And you can see how this measurement looks on a dress form right now. Now, from this point right over here, you're going to draft a perpendicular line that is going to be equal to one quarter of your full bust circumference plus three eighths of an inch for ease. And again, you can see how this measurement looks on the dress form right now. Now, starting at this point, I'm going to draft a perpendicular line with my pencil of any length. This is actually going to be just a secondary helpful line that doesn't really play big significance, but it will help us in creating a really nice smooth back neckline, but you won't see this line as the part of the final pattern. Now at the very top right over here, we're going to draft a straight perpendicular line that is going to equal to one sixth of your full neck circumference plus three eighths of an inch. And this is this line right over here. And this is how it looks on the dress form. And starting at the same point at which we just drafted the line for the neckline, we're going to draft a straight line that is going to equal to half of the back shoulder width measurement like so. You have your top with your neckline, you have your bust line and your waistline as a result. Let's go ahead and turn the whole pattern so that way you can see the drafting of the neckline a little bit better. Here I'm dropping a straight line down just with pencil since this line is going to help us out. Now with a curved line, I'm going to outline the back neckline. And please note that these two points right over here are drafted almost at a 90 degree angle. Now let's take care of the waist darts. This is your bust line, this is your waistline. And now we need to extend the waistline all the way to be the same width as our bust line. And here you see me do that with pencil. And here's the thing, if you were to connect the bust line and the waistline as they are right now, and here you see me do that for visual purposes in pencil, you would create a side seam that is way too steep. So to make that better, this is my preferred method on creating a waist dart and this method I also use in pencil skirts as well. So you take this difference between bust and waist and you divide it in half. I'm going to go ahead and outline that in red and I'm going to extend my waistline all the way to that point. There we go. So this half of the difference between bust and waist is now part of the new waistline. Go ahead and take the new waistline and divide it in half. Now at this point that you just marked is going to be the middle of your waist dart and the value of your waist dart is going to be the same value as you have added right over here. So the dart is equal on both sides. So you need to take that value 
that extra value and divide it in half. So on each side of the dart would be exactly the same value. And then you mark those points and you draw dart legs. And that is going to be your waist dart. It's pretty easy and pretty straightforward. If you need, you can watch it one more time. And now you just need to finish up with drafting the side seam. And that is going to be from this point to this point with a straight line. And you can see the difference between one and the other. Now for these next couple of final steps, we're actually gonna go back on top. And now from the edge of your top measurement, you're gonna go ahead and drop a straight line. And it doesn't have to be all the way to the bust line. It can be about three to four inches long. And I'm doing that in pencil since this is going to be a secondary line to help us. Now from this corner right over here, you're actually gonna go and take your straight ruler and you're gonna place it at zero mark in that corner like so. Now on that ruler, you're going to find the value of your back shoulder slope plus one eighth of an inch. So back shoulder slope plus one eighth of an inch. And you can see this measurement on the dress from right over here. Once you have found that measurement on your ruler, you're going to angle the ruler towards the line that you just drew from the edge of the top measurement. And once the ruler crosses that line, you're going to stop and mark it. For this next step, you're going to connect the point that you just marked with the edge of your back neckline with a straight line. Now that is not your shoulder seam just yet. For that, you will need to measure the shoulder seam from the edge of your shoulder all the way to the base of your neck. And you see me do that on your screens right now. So you're gonna go ahead and measure that. And that is going to be your shoulder seam. Now, from the edge of your back neckline, you're going to see where that measurement falls. Now that line might go past the mark of the shoulder slope. It can be before the mark of the shoulder slope. As you see, mine is just a tiny bit shorter. Now that is going to be your shoulder seam. Go ahead and outline that in red, black, or whatever you're using. Now from that point, go ahead and drop another straight line all the way to the bust line. I'm marking that with pencil as again, this is a secondary line that is going to help us out while building the armhole. Now go ahead and divide this distance from the back of your neckline to the bust line in half. And you see me do that on your screens right now. And once done, divide the bottom half in half again. Now go ahead and drop perpendicular lines like so on the first measurement and on a second measurement as well. Now on the first line when it's crossing this line right over here, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna take one quarter of an inch towards the center back. You see me do that on your screens right now. There we go. And now we're going to outline the points through which our armhole is gonna go. So you see me do that as well. You can use a French curve, you can do that by hand, whichever way you prefer, but basically you're going to connect these points. And once you're happy with a curve of your back armhole, go ahead and outline that like so. There we go. And now your back pattern piece is all ready to go. Now let's go ahead and draft the front pattern piece. And it's actually pretty easy and straightforward. Now you will need to use some of the measurements from the back pattern piece. So keep that handy and next to you as well. So first we're going to start on this side of the pattern paper, which is also going to be the center front of our front pattern. Now the first measurement is going to be the front high point shoulder all the way to the waist. And you see me make that measurement here in a straight line. Now on a dress form, this measurement is going to look like this from the base of the neck to the waist in a straight line going through the fullest part of your bust like so now for this next step you're going to go ahead and grab your back pattern piece and these are the measurements that we're going to copy so first of all we're going to place it underneath uh, in my case i can actually see through my pattern paper so we're going to align it at the waist right so at the waist now you're going to copy the bust measurement and the waist measurement as well. And once that is done, the next thing that we're going to need is the measurement that goes between the two bust apexes. And you see how it looks on your dress form right now. So you take your measuring tape, you stretch it between the two bust apexes. And for this next step, we are going to need only half of this measurement. And this measurement is gonna go on the bust line right over here. So starting at the center front of the pattern, you're 
going to place half of the measurement that you just took. For this next step, we're actually going to copy the waist start from the back pattern piece since these are going to be identical except for one minor adjustment. Now on the front of the pattern, the darts that go all the way up to the bust never go all the way to the bust apex, so we actually need to lower it. Now here I'm lowering my bust apex by about one inch and a half. Now for me, I usually do half an inch or one inch. For this dress form, I decided to do one inch and a half. It just really depends on the size of the bust. And now we're going to align at this point right over here with the center of the dart of the back. And all we're going to do is we're going to copy this dart, but instead of going all the way to the bust apex, it's gonna go an inch and a half lower. And you see me do that on your screens right now. And now the front waist dart for you is done. Now to finish up the side seam, just connect these two points and we're all done with this part of the pattern drafting. For this next step, we're gonna go all the way to the top and we're going to use exactly the same measurement as we did for the back pattern piece. This measurement that you see me draw right now is half of the back shoulder width minus quarter of an inch. So half of the back shoulder width minus quarter of an inch for the front. Now you're gonna connect the edge of that new measurement with the bust line with a straight line. It can be about three to four inches long. It doesn't have to go all the way to the bust. Now let's take care of the neckline. And it's really easy and straightforward. So the measurement that we're going to use is exactly the same as for the back pattern piece. It's going to be one sixth of your full neck circumference plus three eighths of an inch. And now we're actually going to place this measurement on both the top and the center front of the pattern as well. Now I'm drawing a little box like this since this is going to help us out. And at a 45 degree angle, I'm going to place exactly the same measurement as well. Now imagine that you are actually building a circle and that's exactly what we're doing right over here. This is a quarter of a circle and it actually is going to be our front neckline. Easy peasy like this. Now let's go ahead and move to the shoulder slope. For the front shoulder slope, you're going to measure it on the front in exactly the same way as we did on the back. And you see me do that on your screens on the dress form right now. So you're going to repeat exactly the same thing as we did for the back pattern piece, but this time you're gonna go and do that with the front pattern piece. There we go, and that is going to be my shoulder slope. Now you're going to connect this point with the edge of your front neckline, like so. And remember, we also needed our shoulder seam measurement as well. And it just so happens that this line right over here is actually exactly the measurement of my shoulder seam as I need. So I don't need to do any adjustments from here. But of course, if your shoulder seam is longer or shorter than the initial line that we just drew, go ahead and do exactly the same steps as we did for the back pattern piece. Measure that on this line and then from the edge of your new shoulder seam, go ahead and drop a straight line all the way to the bust line. For this next step, go ahead and divide this measurement from the bust all the way to the top in half and draw a perpendicular line that crosses this line. Now from the intersection, go ahead and measure three quarters of an inch. Sometimes I measure half an inch, three quarters of an inch. It just really depends on the armhole. And then we're gonna divide the bottom section in half as well and draw another perpendicular line. Now we're going to connect these four points to create the front neckline. If you have the French curve, use it. And if you don't, you can do it by hand. As you see right over here, as I'm outlining this curve, my curve is going a little bit off of that three quarters of an inch measurement. So if it makes for a smoother curve, I don't force it. As I said, sometimes I take three quarters of an inch, sometimes it's half an inch. So once you're happy with your curve, go ahead and outline that. And then we're gonna move to our next and final step. So for the first thing, go ahead and grab your back pattern piece and aligning it at the shoulder seams together with the front pattern piece, I just want to make sure that the shoulder seams match in length, that the neckline looks good and that the armholes look good as well. So once you have done that, go ahead and measure the back 
armhole. And we're going to do that by taking your measuring tape, placing it on the rib, and very, very carefully measuring. Make sure that you can be as precise as you can. And once you have that measurement, go ahead and write it down next to your armhole. For me, that's nine inches and one quarter. Now you're going to repeat exactly the same steps for the front armhole as well. Placing your measuring tape on the rib, very carefully measure the length of the front armhole. And once you have that measurement, you're gonna go ahead and write it down as well. And you will see that your front armhole as of this very moment is longer than your back armhole. So we need to fix that. And that's how we're going to make our bust start. So usually the front armhole is of the same length or about a quarter of an inch shorter than the back armhole. Sometimes it can be about half an inch, but usually equal length or a quarter of an inch shorter. I like for the balance for my front armholes to be quarter of an inch shorter than my back. So you will need to do a little bit of a math, but my front is 10 inches, my back is nine and a quarter. If I take one inch away from this part of my front armhole, it is going to measure nine inches, which is one quarter of an inch less than my back, which is perfect. Here, I'm marking that one inch that I need to take away at any point of the lower part of my front armhole, and I'm drafting dart legs all the way to the bust apex, like so. And this is essentially going to be our bust dart. Now, I want it on a side seam, and because I also lowered my waist dart by one and a half inches, I'm going to do exactly the same here for the side seam as well. So that's where my bust dart is gonna go. Now I'm going to connect the bust apex with this point Point like so and I'm also going to outline the dart legs of my bust dart as well. For this next step we're actually going to cut away the side seam and the armhole like so and now we will cut through with the scissors all the way but not almost all the way so that way we can actually move and close our bust dart. So first cut is going to be right over here and the second cut is going to be right over here. Now, once you have that done, it will look like so. And now you can actually move it. And we're going to close this bust dart at the armhole, opening the bust dart at the side seam. Perfect. Of course, we will need to true up our front armhole now, but you can take your measuring tape and you can measure just to make sure that now it does measure about a quarter of an inch less than your back armhole. And if it doesn't, you can open up the dart a little bit more or close it a little bit more as well. Now let's copy this whole thing onto the fresh piece of pattern paper so that way you don't have to worry about anything ripping or sliding away. So here you see me simply outlining everything that is needed, but I really want you to pay attention to the point where we're actually copying the bust dart. So this is the bust apex, and currently our new bust dart goes all the way up to there. But just like we did with the waist dart, we need to move the tip of the dart away from the bust apex. So measuring one and a half inches, the same distance as I did for the waist dart as well, and I'm placing it in the middle of the current dart. And now I'm connecting that new point with the dart opening at the side seam, and I'm drafting the new dart legs. And it's easy as that, and now you have the new and adjusted bust dart. The last step is to true up the front armhole and then you're all done. When I say to true up, meaning that when you have closed the bust dart at the armhole, you might have had jagged edges. So when you trace it on a new piece of pattern paper, you want to make sure that you don't repeat those jagged edges, but instead you draft a really nice and smooth front armhole. And when you're done with that, you want to measure it just to make sure one more time that it does measure what you need it to measure. And then once you're happy, with that curved line, go ahead and outline. And you see me do that on your screens right now. And that's it, your front pattern piece is ready. Here you can see the difference between one and the other. You can see the difference between the darts and the bust apexes and how it actually looks. Now, before we cut our test pattern, let's go ahead and double check one last time to make sure that everything definitely is perfect. First of all, take your front back pattern pieces and align them at the shoulder seam. Here, you want to double check that the shoulder seam matches. Now, you want to take a look at the neckline. You want to make sure that it's nice and smooth. Now, you want to take a look at the armhole. You want to make sure that it's nice and smooth as well. There's no 
really weird angles or anything else like that and if there are you want to make sure that you do fix it before you cut your test pattern out and the last thing is by putting them side seam to side seam you want to make sure that this armhole looks really nice and good as well now here's a quick mention if you are a member of this channel first of all thank you so much from the bottom of my heart second of all definitely go ahead and check the community tab and membership tab on my channel page just simply click on my channel name and you will see the community tab and membership tab there you will find all of the perks that come with your membership and point number three is that you already have instruction sheets with step-by-step -step drafting instructions for this darted bodice block and you can find them in your perks and there is also a members extra video with extra tips about fitting and extra tips about taking your measurements as well so definitely take a look if you're not a member yet and you want to know what that is all about i will leave the information in the info box below for you guys all right now let's cut your paper pattern out now here a really important reminder all of the tutorials that are on my channel unless otherwise stated or specified come without seam allowances that means that i don't draft seam allowances on my paper pattern so please draft your seam allowances first before you cut your test pattern out out of fabric and while i am an advocate of smaller seam allowances if i were you for this particular purpose i would cut seam allowances maybe at half an inch so that way if needed you have a little bit of wiggle room for fitting your bodice now here's another important thing to add when i fit bodice blocks or anything else that is initially sleeveless and i just really want to see the fit of the armhole on the actual body or the dress form i do not include seam allowances right over here so that way when i put this on i don't have to remind myself that there's a quarter of an inch or three eighths of an inch or half an inch of seam allowance sticking out and instead i can see the true fit of the armhole i do exactly the same thing for the neckline as well so when you will see this on the dress form the neckline and the armhole come without seam allowances and obviously when you're going to be making an actual garment out of this bodice block you will be adding seam allowances everywhere now here i did run out out of my muslin fabric but i did have swedish pattern paper on hand so i decided to use that instead if you're curious about what that is i will leave the link for you guys in the info box below and you can go and check it out now i also made just the half of the bodice over here because obviously here's the center front and then there's center back and i can easily align this on my dress form so let me do that let's go ahead and talk about the fit and this is how it looks on the dress form and for the first fitting i'm really happy now we will be talking about the ease over here we will be talking about reducing the gaping front armhole as you can see i've already made creases over here and that is also going to correspond with making an optional dart over here in the back armhole and as you can see i have already made creases over here as well now you might see ease right over here and you might think well this is a fitted bodice why there is room over here in this area well you need some ease in this area and although we will be reducing the front armhole and the back armhole by creating a dart you still need some ease in this area especially if you want to create a sleeve that goes with this bodice block and that sleeve if you want it to be functional where you can actually raise your arm and move you want to have some ease in this area otherwise you will create a garment that is so stiff and you won't be able to move in it at all so ease in this area is that definitely needed. And of course, if there is too much ease here and you can feel now that there definitely is too much ease and you can reduce it by reducing the ease at the bust. Next, of course, I want to make sure that the measurements that I took actually coincide with the measurements that I have on my dress form and they do. Here's my bust apex. And of course, our darts did not come all the way up to the bust apex, which is the way that we wanted it to be. I want to take a look where the shoulder ends and it ends right here at the measurement, which is really great. The neckline is tight, but it, obviously you will be reducing it or adjusting it to whatever other garments you will be building from this bodice block because this is not a garment this is a bodice block now let's talk about the back pattern piece over here and the optional dart at the armhole now usually you will see this dart being transferred into the shoulder line or into the neckline and the dart over here is for the purpose of minimizing this little pucker over here because if you take a look at our body and the way we stand our shoulders don't go like this part over here doesn't go all the way straight it actually curves in and because it does curve in and doesn't sit straight 
as this does, it creates a little pucker over here, a little pocket of emptiness. So in order to reduce that, you want to create a little dart that will close that out. It's really easy to do. So usually it's about half an inch, uh, maybe a little bit less. I would do a quarter of an inch on each side of the dart. So in total, that would be about half an inch. But of course, it will depend on your body, on your figure, and on the fit that you want to go with. Sometimes you might want to skip the dart altogether depending on the fabric that you're using and the garment that you're making. So if you do want to create a dart in order to create a really well-fitting back armhole, you're going to pinch in the excess. Remember, you don't want it to be so tight, like I can probably pinch in here close to an inch and a half, but you don't want it to be super tight, right? But you want to pinch it in enough to create that really nice smooth armhole as you can see right now. So once you have pinched that in, you want to make sure that when you pinch it in, this dart smooths out into the direction of the center back. Once done, you want to pin it in. If you want, you can mark it right here on your test garment. And then once you take it off, you will lay it on top of your pattern piece and you are going to copy this dart onto your pattern piece. Easy as that. And if you need to move this dart into the shoulder line or the back neckline, you're going to do exactly the same procedure as we did with the bust dart as well. The only thing is you're not going to be looking for the bust apex because obviously this dart doesn't go to the bust apex. So it's even easier than that. So super easy and you will do that. Now, remember what I said about the back armhole usually being about quarter of an inch longer than the front armhole. In a lot of techniques, you're actually going to see that I suggest for the back armhole to be even with the front armhole. But the reality is that if you have a bust that is above B cup, and even if you have a B cup, usually if these two are even, you will see a little pucker right over here. And that is the gaping front armhole. Now, because I just reduced my back armhole, I also need to reduce my front armhole as well. And then I'm going to be closing this dart by exactly the same amount as I did right over here. And remember, you don't want it to be too tight. You want it to be just right. You want this dart to, to disappear um, just about close to the bust apex, just like all of the other darts that go to the bust apex. You're going to do exactly the same thing. You will mark it and then you're going to transfer it onto your front pattern piece. Now here, you don't have to leave it at the armhole, you don't have to put it in your shoulder and you don't have to put it in your front neckline. Here, you're actually going to marry it together with your bust dart over here as well. So we're talking about this original pattern piece where the dart went all the way to the bust apex and we actually cut this apart. And instead of making this, let's say one inch or whatever was your value of this dart, you're going to make it one inch plus however much you actually pinched in right over here and then you're just going to make this amount bigger and you're going to repeat exactly the same things you're gonna close the dart it will open up a bigger sight seam dart and all of the steps after that are going to be exactly the same now I know this video was way longer than my usual videos, but I really wanted to take the time and to explain all of the steps in a visual manner so that way it really is easy for you and convenient for you to draft your own darted bodice block. So I truly hope that you enjoyed. If you want a video on how to draft a basic sleeve block, then click right over here. There's a video on that as well, pretty detailed on how the sleeve works and how to draft it. And until next time, thank you so much for watching. I truly hope that you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one really, really soon. Bye!